Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for Off the Press. We do have Tunde Kolawale, who's on standby, and he'll be joining us in no time to make sense of all of the headlines. I start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. On the front page of the Daily Independent newspaper, uh, the banner caption says, Lagos rejects panel's report on death of nine persons. Uh, talking about the hashtag end SARS protests. Governor Songwo Lu invites youth for peace work. Senators at war over alleged lopsided army recruitment. And you also have a Biondu present 351 billion naira 2022 budget of restoration. Federal government to punish officials over illegal recruitment, payroll, and padding. EFCC arrests Fanny Kayo Day in Lagos and moves him into custody. And there was also a report yesterday where he said that he was not arrested. Well, he was invited for questioning and he's been released. Buhari lacks power to release Namdi Kanu. Kiyamo is quoted on that. And you also have another uh, caption here saying, Senate probes, jail breaks and summons AGF, Minister and NCOS and CG. Court voids banishment of disposed Emir Sanusi's award, and uh, you have 10 million naira to him. I take that again. Court voids uh, banishment of disposed Emir Sanusi and award 10 million naira to him. That's the much we can take on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Moving on to the Daily Trust, uh, the main headline for this morning, no killing at Lake Heat Holgate, Lagos Cantor's uh, panel. Uh, government accept 11 recommendations, campaigners reject some of those overtures. All right, uh, today actually is World Health, uh, World AIDS Day. Nigeria's HIV response still donor funded. Uh, 257 projects worth 20 billion naira duplicated in the 2021 budget. That's according to the ICPC. Other stories just uh, below the paper. 20 die as bold capsizes with 47 pupils offers in Kano. All right, on the blue strip here, a ban the, a banishment apologize uh, to Sanusi Kotel's Kano government. All right, uh, Nigerians to apply for Forex online as CBN deploys e form A. A local content, federal government saves 3.5 trillion naira on oil and gas project. Those are most of the stories you can find on the Daily Trust. Away from the Daily Trust newspaper, let's quickly check out the leadership this morning. And uh, you have health insurance. Poor services put 12 million patients at odds with hospitals. HMOs is a bold caption for the leadership. Hospital th treaters with substandard drugs. That's what subscribers are quoted to say. Uh, sounds familiar. We can't go beyond amount approved by HMOs. Uh, you also have hospitals as well. Our branded drugs will address and release consent, Sage, uh, says the NHIS. 2021 budget padded with 257 projects worth 20.138 billion naira. That's what the ICPC is quoted to say. President Mohamed Buhari vows to sanction heads of indicted MDAs. Away from that, on easy cam in Kano as court nullifies former Emir Sanusi's banishment. Hashtag answers. Lagos releases white pepper, the bonds, lucky killings. Another header says, Senate invites Aregbe Shola, Malami over jail breaks. And influential Nigerians working against electronic voting. That's what INEC is quoted to say. Barbados emerges from the United Kingdom's shadow, now in a republic might just be dominating some of the papers this morning. And that's the much we can take. All right, uh, finally, the last paper for us this morning is The Punch. Uh, the main headline, uh, it is a uh, compulsory vaccination. Workers demand much deadline throng centers. Federal government insist on December 1. With some 
Riders there. A letter for March extension will get to government today, says ASCSN, that's as, I guess the Association of Civil Servants, the Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. We are not contemplating any extension after December 1 deadline, the PSC is saying. And of course, security operatives bar workers without face mask from uh, government uh, buildings. Other stories on the punch this morning. The NDLEA destroys a 50 billion naira drugs, arrest 10,355 traffickers. On the blue strip here, Lagos rejects Pano's casualty figure, says one killed in Lekki. Uh, on the red strip, Akeridolu orders on Doe nightclub's closure, alleges some for a boys peddling drugs, uh, hawking sex. Uh, 40 festival-bound passengers uh, drown as overloaded cannibal boat capsizes. Above the masthead, there are some stories uh, of interest. The petrol may sell above 340 naira per liter. Marketers uh, plan imports amid a uh, forex crisis. Retirees increase by 2%, collect 890 billion naira from government's private sector. Illegal recruitment, Buhari vows sanctions, ICPC indicts Ngege Ministry, others. And the final story on the punch at this more than mushroom growers seek inclusion in CBN program I-45.3 billion dollars market. Those are all the stories on the front page of the punch this morning. All right, let's have uh, Tunde Kolawale join the conversation this morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We do appreciate yeah, your good time. Good morning for having me. All right, so let's head straight to it. Uh, the big story here. Lagos rejects panel's report on death of nine persons. What are your thoughts on that? Are you surprised? Oh, absolutely. I am surprised. It's also very, very curious to me that a government will reject the report of uh, an agency that was set up by the government itself. Like I've always said, when you look at the composition of that panel, except uh, Uduala, and maybe Ebuade uh, Borua, all the other people on that panel, including the chairman, can be described as a pro-government people. You will remember that the chairman of the panel used to work in the Ministry of Justice, where I think he rose to the level of uh, uh, Solicitor General and all that before becoming a judge. Ditto for some of these other people. So if you have yourself set up a panel and the panel has had the quality to come up with a report. And you have also gone to that panel to give evidence, to send that document. You have hired lawyer to argue your case before the panel. And the panel came out with his findings now. On what basis are you rejecting it? It really doesn't make sense. I suspect that they are rejecting this panel simply because the report has not been favorable to the people in government. And we could see this coming with all the rigmarole that we saw in the work of that uh, panel. Initially, the soldiers said they didn't go there. But when uh, someone came out and said, look, Certain people down in there. The soldier now came out that it was Sowulu that invited them. He also said they didn't go there with a light bullet, that it was a rubber bullet they went in there with. Later they said they had both rubber bullet and both uh, uh, the real bullet, so to say. And all manners of contradiction. The bottom line is this this is not 1984. Technologies like satellite, DNA, and all manners of uh, uh, technology are now there to unravel what most government would like to keep a secret 
Also remember that during the end of uprising, the pathologist was asked how many bodies were brought to the hospital during the end. He said about 93 or such, uh, I mean, about that. I remember the Lagos State government also announcing that people who have lost people, have made people uh, relations couldn't be fine. They should go to uh, the Ikeja uh, hospital and uh, see whether any of the bodies in there would belong to them or could be that of their relation. So if it was just only one person that died in Lekki or during the NSAS process, why would the government instead be announcing that people should visit the mutualists in Lagos to recover or check whether some of the bodies in there is that of their relation. I've also had the argument being made that why is it that the parents, the relations, the uncles, the brothers, the sisters, or people who might have lost people, haven't had the courage to come out and say, look, one of my passing is missing. Now to the extent that people are not coming out, we show that nobody died at the Lekki toll gate. But I will give you a graphic example. Here in Mushin, the DPO and the police under his custody, where the young persons were demonstrating, singing, drumming, and holding the national draw, I mean the national flag, they opened fire on them. And more than 20 children or more than 20 of our youth either got injured, maimed, or killed that night. You will not believe it that after that incident, a group of us lawyers tried to form a team to take up the cases of all those who are injured, who might have been killed, who might have been maimed, or even got missing in the process. And we approached the families of these people of our intentions to help them seek justice. You will not believe it that what most of the relations said was that, look, we have either lost our children, our children have been maimed. Some of them have even disappeared. We don't know where they've been taken to. But we are not interested in pursuing any case with government. Citizens hardly win case against government. Furthermore, if we have lost our children, we want to be left to mourn the death of those children. Making a case with the government, will it bring them back? We want to rely that God will be the one to console us. Okay, quick, quickly, that just before we move away from, from this. Tunde Kolawole, uh, for the yes. want of time, so we can uh, also look at all the issues on the papers this morning. I'd also like to yes. share your thoughts quickly on, I mean, we're looking at the daily independence, but just as a yes. follow-up to this, uh, the governor, prior to the time he released the white paper, had called for peace walk uh, for the healing of the land, uh, that is Lagos State. Let's also share your thoughts on that. You mean, please repeat that again for me. Now, before the release of the white paper, uh, the governor had extended an invitation calling for a peace walk. He called on prominent Nigerians, uh, especially those who participated in the protests, the likes of Fouls, as has been popularly called, Shim Kuti and Mr. Makarani. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Now, the essence of this peace work is for the healing of the land. Well, uh, that is a PRS gimmick, which I'm not too sure we'll be able to wash the bodies of the young Nigerian, I mean, the blood of the young Nigerian that has been spilled. I'm not too sure any work is likely to heal the deep wound that is now etched in the heart of our people. The process or the path to healing the injuries that have been inflicted, the deaths that have uh, occurred, and the maiming and disappearance of people is for government to own up to the truth of the tragedy of what happened at the Lekki Toll Gate and in the other parts of Lagos during the NSAS uh, uprising. They say it is true that you, the nation, you and I saw what happened during the Okuta panel. You saw what happened 
during the reconciliation, the truth and reconciliation process in South Africa, and also in Rwanda and Burundi. Was it a work that was done in those places? The answer is no. In fact, when you do a work now, what you will find are all these musicians, all these comedians, and all these clowns who sees the opportunity of the uprising of me of of uh, the making, uh, I mean, of the police uprising or rise against the staff to popularize themselves? They merely use it as publicity. Those who really did the work, who mobilized the children to rise up against injustice and seek redress, when the ones that were getting the publicity, but all the macaronis and then the spaghetti and then the beans of this world. In fact, these days I get pissed off when I see the way and manner artists and musicians are now, are now dominating both the political, I mean, the political space in order to get the publicity. Whereas they are part and parcel of the people in authority. Where is the money they are making coming from? No, but um, th this set other... of, I, I don't know if we should get into this yeah, back and because forth. They have but, because indeed, if actually... you look at this set of young persons, they have been commended for their bravery. Yes, they have. Uh, uh, you, you, you talk about Files, who has been consistent. And uh, looking at his uh, response to that invitation, because when the governor was making his speech, he outrightly uh, you know, mentioned their names. And they have turned the invitation down, saying they They're are rejected. asking for justice. So I, I don't think that, you know, yes, we understand that we probably might have others who are not, um, uh, who don't believe in the same cause, but this sets of persons have actually been living up to expectations. And they have yes. been commended by a lot of Nigerians and outside of Nigeria. A lot uh, of commendation coming for them. But I'll uh, hand you over to, you know, Justin at this point in time. Yes, yeah, so let's uh, move away from the Lekki uh, killings for now and uh, focus on other issues that are making them front um, page of um, several newspapers. Let's move on to the Daily Trust. Uh, aside from the Lekki toll gate, uh, another story that they have captioned boldly there is uh, a 20 die as boat capsizes with 47 pupils, others in Kano. A barrister, Kolaole, let's get your quick um, um, thought on that particular uh, incident that happened yesterday? Well, uh, that is a, a tragedy of a monumental proportion. Uh, in the 21st century, you wouldn't expect that kind of a thing to be happening. But because human lives no longer mean anything to us in this part of the world, we keep losing the most valid, the most agile, and the most active of our people. When we were young, and you were going to cross a river, or you were going to use the ocean, or use a boat, or a ferry, before you do it, you were given a life jacket. So that if there's an accident, you will not sink with either the boat or with the ferry or what have you. There were also people that would come, I mean, that were called the uh, coast guards in those days. These are people who know how to swim and all that. So that immediately there is an accident on the water, they dive in there and begin to rescue people. When that did you see that kind of, I mean, those uh, kind of people assign responsibility to rescue people when there is a boat to start? Well, the truth is, human life no longer means anything to us. And most of the safeguards and precautions that we ordinarily should put on ground to ensure that when accidents happen, we quickly rescue them. We've taken all those things for granted. May the souls of all the people that lost their life in that uh, canoe boat swap rest in peace. I also want to appeal or plead with the government in Kano to set up um, an inquiry as to what happened that we could lose that kind of number of people in one single boat. Uh, 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 a varying of people from one end to the other. There's no basis for it to happen in the 21st century. All right, let's also look at the leadership newspaper again. And on this one, you have INEC saying influential Nigerians working against electronic voting. Uh, we wonder who these persons are. What are your thoughts? Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, it is not just in INEC. Go and find out. Anywhere the authorities or the Nigerians 
have tried to inject technology into processes and procedures to make sure that things are done faster and better. Certain persons have always put spanners in the wheel of a progress. Take, for example, the Nigerian port. At the time they said, because of the congestion in there, you are going to be using a tally. And the tally works at the port. Is the port still not congested? The truth is, it is very, very congested. The tally process hasn't worked. In the courts, too, we began the computerization of the court processes more than 15 years ago, all over Nigeria. But you will not believe me that it is more difficult to get things done in the Nigerian court than it was before the computerization process. It is like that because certain people don't want the computerization process to work. Once the computerization process works, then you are taking food out of their mouth. So I am not surprised that this is happening to INEC. A lot of people don't want a smooth running INEC. They don't want a only transfer of results. They don't want things to work seamlessly. In countries like the Republic and Togo here, very close to us, will you believe it that electoral materials are distributed a day or two before the election? And then the electoral officials will take them home. And then from their home, they will go straight to their respective polling booths for the voting process the following day or three days later. And as the votes are being concluded, they are sending the results from the different polling booths to some server somewhere. And before you know it, the results are automatically collated and released. It is here that professors will be appointed to carry just ordinary paper from Portacourt to Abuja to the International Conference Center to announce results. And when he gets there, he will lose his eyes glasses and will not be able to read what he himself had written. So, the truth is, the Nigerian allies know that they will be taken out of business, that it will be difficult for them to win election if we do the right, the things we are supposed to do to make the elections run smoothly. An electronic transfer of results is part of it. Electronic voting is part of it. The dispatch of results right from the polling booth to some servers at the INEC headquarters. An automatic, or I mean automatic computation or compilation of those results by the server itself are solutions to having a free and fair election in Nigeria. But the Nigerian political allies know that if things work smoothly, they will be taken out of this thing. Many of them will never win elections again in Nigeria. That is why you see that they are opposed to some of the reforms that INEC is trying to bring into the electoral process. It is left to win Nigerian people to say that we want our votes to count, that we delete the frustrations, the compromising of the elections, the target that we used to see associated with all elections, we no longer want to see in the 21st century. There is no justification for it. And until we clean up that area, good people will continue to run away from participating in politics. And when good people run away from participating in politics, what you will have is that the space will be dominated by all these roughnecks, murderers, certificate forgers, People who have no plan for the Nigerian people, who don't have the capacity to deliver the dividend of democracy, will be the one calling the shots in our political uh, uh, space. But we must insist that INEC be allowed to do the right thing. All right, by and I Lowe. think you and I, the press, the civil society, and also the international community, will help us to get to our destination. All right, we sure we'll do our own part. Uh, on the Punch and newspaper this morning, the main story is on compulsory vaccination and workers are demanding March deadline and they have drunk several centers you know, to get them vaccinated and the federal government is insisting on the December 1st being today. So what are your thoughts concerning that? My brother, what compulsory vaccination can you do when the vaccines are not even on ground? When we, are, when we don't even have the money to buy the vaccine? When we are, I mean, um, 
when we are relying on the European Union, on the Americans and the Chinese to donate vaccines to us. So what vaccination, what composite vaccinations are you talking about? This country used to manufacture a lot of vaccines in the past. What happened to our capacity to manufacture vaccines? Nigeria used to have some of the best virologists in the world in position of people like Tam David West and the rest of them. What has happened to all those people? And then the uh, COVID vaccine, I mean, COVID pandemic has been on now for more than uh, two years. What has stopped us from developing our own local vaccine to combat uh, uh, the COVID? If a tiny country like uh, Cuba can come up with its own vaccine, why would a nation of 200 million people with some of the best virologists uh, working around the world will not be able to manufacture its own vaccine? Don't let us deceive ourselves. You cannot embark on a journey of compulsive vaccination of people against COVID when you cannot produce or manufacture your own vaccine. When you depend on donor nations to give you those vaccines to use. And the, best, the, the truth of the matter is, those nations or those countries who manufacture these things will not give you until they have adequately vaccinated their own people. In some countries in Europe now, they are talking about the fourth round, fourth round of vaccination of their people. And now that they say there's another variant that has been discovered or that has broken up in South Africa, they probably will be talking about the fifth round. So it is when they are taking care of themselves that they would want to remember whether you and I exist in the third world country. Don't bother or waste your time on all these uh, agitations and proposals of compulsive vaccination of 200 million people when you cannot produce ordinary, I mean, 10 bottles of the said vaccines to use. Hmm. All right, quickly, uh, on the leadership, you also have uh, concerns uh, raised by the ICPC that uh, the 2021 budget padded with 257 projects that are worth 20.138 billion naira. Let's quickly share your thoughts on that. Well, that is not news. The only thing that news in there is that uh, when uh, President Buhari first came in, he stood against this uh, pardon of the budget. I remember there was a lot of uh, issues between Mr. President and then the National Assembly with regards to the pardon of budget. To so such an extent that at the time, the President even said he wasn't going to sign uh, one of those uh, budget appropriation bills that was sent to him for his uh, assent. But what has changed? It will appear that the president is no longer bothering himself with whether budgets are padded or not. And that is why, just as it was happening under the PDP, it has continued to happen under the APC. And why is this happening? Most times, when the budgets are padded and the executive arm of government kick against it, the leadership of the National Assembly, the leadership of the State Assembly, will go to the executive arm of government and say, look, we too have people at home who are looking forward to us for one help or the other. In another four years, we will require to go to our constituency and mobilize for votes if we have nothing to show in terms of uh, maybe bringing some developmental projects to them or being able to distribute a motorcycle or a shoeshine kit or a pepper grinder the possibility that we might be able to win election and return to the National Assembly will um, no longer be there. And so, the executive arm of government will be forced to accommodate this uh, pardon of budget. If the pardon of budget has, transla has been translated into development at the grassroots level, if the monies are not being diverted, if the palliative are supposed to reach the people actually get to them, Nobody would have bothered about those things. In fact, it would have encouraged a more even distribution of amenities and infrastructure across the country. But the pattern is done to merely enrich uh, uh, people. It's an opportunity for the people 
in the assembly and even in the sector of government to be able to have eat their cake, so to say, and also have it. You recollect that um, when they ended this year, what is it called? They had issues with the National Assembly and then the organization was being uh, approved. What happened? Somebody had the courage to say, look, you people are probing us. About 70 to 80% of uh, the contract that this organization awarded were gotten by the people in the National Assembly. So what is the moral justification for all this inquiry that uh, you want to do? And what happened? That was the end of the inquiry. I also know of a case in which somebody in the National Assembly insisted that an organization on which he is a member of uh, uh, what do they call the, the National Assembly Committee that supervises that uh, organization. A single individual insisted in the answer that that organization should employ 200 of his kin, 200 of his relations, 200 people from his own village and constituency alone. And the organization was compelled to employ them. This same person also goes in there regularly to collect a jumbo contract, which he doesn't get to execute at the end of the day. So these are the corruption that are associated, not just with the budget party, but also the employment of uh, people in most of the ministries and parastatas. The executive arm of God, the people in the executive arm of government and the National Assembly, the Caesar Assembly, just share all those opportunities among themselves. And who will hold them accountable? The ICPC can only make noise after they have made noise and got all the publicity that they get on paper, like they have been doing the past uh, six years, like they have been doing 20 years of this democracy, and then the noise will just drizzle out, and it will be business as uh, usual. All right, well, we have to let you go now, uh, Tunde Kolawoli. Many thanks for being part of the conversation. We do appreciate and we look forward to having more of you on the show. We step on the breaks now and when we return, we tell you what happened today in history. Please stick around.